guys, welcome back to another video and in this one we're going to be going through how to draw a face using coloured pencils in a really realistic sort of way. So I'm going to be drawing Amelia Clark for this and this here is the final drawing. So we're just going to be focusing today on how to draw the face. But I have got other tutorials coming out on like how to draw all the hair and a speed drawing of the whole thing. So if you don't want to miss out on them, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But anyway, let's go on to this tutorial. So here is a closer look at the finished drawing because there was a lot of reflection in that intro video. So here is a better look. And we're going to start off by drawing the eyes. And the first thing that I always like to do when I'm drawing eyes is block in the shadows. So no matter what reference photo you have, I like to block in the darkest areas of the eye with first like a brown tone colour pencil and also a black colour pencil for something like the pupils or the eyelash line and stuff like that. So I am using the Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencils for this and a list of all of the materials will be in the description but this kind of tips and these techniques apply to any colour pencils that you want to use but they do work better with wax based pencils like Prismacolors or the Caran d'Ache Luminance rather than something like Polychromos because they're oil based and so they don't blend as easily with this technique. So like I said, I'm blocking in all of the shadows, so identify in your reference photo what are the darkest parts of your eye. And it's normally things like the pupil, the part around the iris, the upper lash line and the crease and also the eyebrow as well. And then once I've got all that in, I like to work on the iris and that's the coloured part of the eye. And I first want to see is there any highlights in the iris? So with my one there was a bright highlight in the middle of the pupil and just below the pupil as well. So I like to clearly mark out those highlights and I do that during the sketching stage. And it's really important that you start with a really accurate sketch. And you can do this in many ways, you could directly trace or transfer it using like a monitor or a light box. Or you could use a grid method which is a really really popular method for getting an accurate sketch. And also you could like freehand it, it's up to you, but you need to spend the time to get an accurate sketch. And I do have a whole series of real time tutorials about different sort of sketching techniques on my Patreon if you want to check that out. But when I get in the iris, I look at the colours, her eyes were a bit more like bluey toned with a bit of brown. There's a lot of different tones in her eye iris. but. Even though her eyes have bits of blue in, I didn't use blue, I use grey and that's a tip if you're trying to draw blue eyes is to use grey instead. And so once I did that I went in with the white of the eyes and my main tip for drawing the white of the eyes is to not just do it white but to include a lot of greys in there as well. And this gives your eyes a really nice three dimensional look to them because the white of the eye has got a lot of shadow cast on it. Especially because you've got the upper eyelid going on top of it there is a shadow cast there. So really look at your reference photo import your reference photo into something like paint and use the eyedropper tool to see within that white of the eye where are the darkest points. And so once I've got all that in using the different greys and I also used the white or a lighter grey then to blend it out, I then went in and I started working on the skin and the tear duct. And to do this I used a lot of flesh tones, so warmer, more orange toned flesh tones which are the burnt ochres in the Caran d'Ache Luminance set or the Burnt Siennas and what I like to do no matter what I'm drawing is I like to start off very light with my layers. I like to keep my pencil really sharp, not press hard at all and as I get towards my final layers that is when I press a bit harder and start to burnish and this is when you get that really smooth look. So you'll see throughout this drawing the first few layers it looks very grainy but then it suddenly becomes nice and smooth and that's because I've started to press harder on the pencil that I want to burnish with and it kind of helps blend all of those colours together to create this really smooth look and it works really well on this type of paper as well. 
So I used a lot of different colors. That's a really big thing if you want to make it look realistic is to not just use one color per area. You really need to mix your colors and layer your colors as well. So for the skin, I would use a lot of burnt ochres. So some like orange flesh tones and then some more like pink colors to go over the top or some red tones and browns as well. So I look at the reference photo and I try to pick out the colors to use for each area of skin. And I just layer them up slowly, starting with the dark tones and then as I get towards my final layers I blend with some lighter flesh tones to kind of soften it all out and blend it together and then the next thing is to do the eyebrow and when it comes to the eyebrow you want to look at the direction that the eyebrow hairs are going in if you want it to look really realistic and also you want to make it look like the hair is growing out of the skin rather than just kind of plonked onto the skin with it not really blending in at all. And so I went in with a layer of the sepia which is just a brown tone. I layered that on and I used pencil directions going in the direction that the eyebrows are going in. And then I just kept layering that. I added a bit of black for the darker areas and then I used some stray hairs to sort of blend it into the skin. And I also used a little crafter knife just to pull up lighter hairs and I went over with a lighter colour like a white pencil just to pull up light hairs as well. And the last thing that I like to do once I've got in everything with the eye, so my final stage for the eye, is I like to do obviously the eyelashes. And eyelashes can be very tricky but the three things that you have to keep in mind when you're drawing eyelashes are the length of them. The direction they're going in and how many are there so are they thick are they long are they really curved and just look at your reference photo and try to establish that before you just go in and draw them so those are my main tips for drawing the eyes and now let's move on to drawing the nose and the first thing again like I said is I always like to get in the darkest parts of the feature first and I'm doing the same thing with the nose. I'm using that same brown pencil with a bit of black for the darkest parts to get in these really shadowed areas. And so within the nose, the shadowed areas are the nostrils. They are the darkest part of the nose and pretty much that underneath part of the nose. And I used that brown tone, lightly shaded it on the shadowed areas. I used less sort of pressure and used the side of the pencil for the lighter areas. And once I got in all those shadows, I started to glaze over with the flesh tones. And when you're drawing the nose, you need to look at and establish the structure. So where are the shadows, where are the highlights? With the nose, it tends to be that the highlights are in the center of the nose, going down the bridge of the nose. And then the shadows are on the sides of the nose and underneath. But every nose is different and the even though the anatomy is the same, it might have slightly different lengths and widths of the nose, structures. You know, you need to look at your reference photo and establish just about where the shadows and the highlights are. And also what sort of tone, like skin tone has it got? Is it cool toned? Is the skin warmer toned? Like is there more pink in it? that would mean that it's more cooler toned or is it more warm toned where it's got more like orange or yellow tones in them. And then use that information to help judge what colored pencils you need to use for that. So I'm just building up those colored pencils. I like to start with the base layer of the lightest color here. So a nice flesh tone, just a general base layer. And then I build on that with those dark shadows. And when I'm building and layering, I'm not applying the pressure. I'm keeping the pencil really sharp, which means that if you have a sharp pencil, it can get into all of the white grain of the paper really, really easily. So you don't actually have to press hard at all. If you've got a sharp pencil, then to get that sort of darker look instead of pressing harder just rework over that area with not much more pressure at all with no more pressure but just rework it at different angles so that you're getting that pencil into all of the white grain of the paper and this will give you a darker look so again I'm building up more shadows on the underneath part of the nose you might notice that certain areas aren't dark enough. In that case, you need to go and darken them even more. I find that a main mistake that beginners have is they're so afraid to go really dark with their colored pencils because they don't want to mess it up. But if your reference photo 
is dark, then don't be afraid to go in and get it as dark as it needs to be. Because it isn't actually values that make things unrealistic. So even if you've got all of your colors like really spot on, it's the depth, it's the contrast. If you have your shadows in the right place and the highlights, even if your like skin tone's a bit off, it will look a lot more realistic than if you got your colors correct but didn't get areas dark as they needed to be. So I like to blend again with that lighter colour to soften everything out and then I pull up the highlights at the end by applying a lot more pressure with something like a white pencil. So now onto the mouth. And with this one I had teeth to draw, there was a bit of the mouth open so there was that really dark area in the middle because you could see inside the mouth and this is normally really really dark. So I wanted to get that darkest area in first with the black. And now I'm working on adding a base layer to the lips. And so I used the Burnt Sienna for the base layer and I just filled in the top and bottom lip, nothing special, I just filled it in. And then I went in with a darker version of the Burnt Sienna and this is just like a pinkish brown tone. And I used that shadow tone just to identify where are the shadows in the lips and the mouth. And blocking in those shadows really makes it look full and gives it that full look to the lips so that it looks three dimensional. And that is just my main tip over and over again, no matter what you're drawing, you need to identify where the shadows and highlights are. And if you get them right, then it's going to look so much more realistic. So once I'd got in the base layer and the shadows, that is when I like to just glaze colors to make it more color accurate to the reference photo. So I added more like orange tones in certain areas and like pinker tones, just to make it as close to reference photo color as possible. But it would have looked realistic even if I didn't do this because I had the shadows as dark as they needed to be and the highlights as light as they needed to be. And another thing to mention when drawing lips to make them look realistic is to also get in all of those little creases and bumps that make it have texture. And so you need to look at the way those creases curve and all of that sort of stuff. And if you get that right, then it will add another layer of realism to your colored pencil work. And again, I only started pushing down that pencil when I got to those final layers. So then I decided to do the skin around the mouth and one thing that you'll notice about drawing realistic mouths is that the kind of transition between the mouth and the lips and the skin is very very soft. So you want to slowly transition those colours and bleed those colours into each other rather than your mouth having a harsh edge and a harsh sort of outline. And that's, that's the same for any feature that you're drawing, you don't want your features to have outlines because in realism a face doesn't have an outline around your eyes, nose, mouth. It's very soft and subtle transitions and to do that you need to overlap the colours so you'll overlap some of the mouth colour into a bit of the skin and the skin tones into a bit of the edge of the lips so that it subtly transitions into each other and blend those areas together like you would if you blend in skin or whatever and that would make it look a lot more realistic and a lot more sort of subtle unless the person is wearing lipstick then it would be more of a harsh edge and then once I'd done that and I added all of the skin in a similar way using similar colours to what I did with the nose and the rest of the skin, I went in and I did the teeth and these teeth had a lot of shadow on them so it was just quite dark so I just used two different grey tones, a darker one and then a lighter one just to block those in and it didn't take me very long to do the teeth at all just because there wasn't much detail that we could see, it was just quite dark and in shadow. But teeth does have a lot of grey tones, very much like the white of the eye. So you need to make sure that even if it seems strange to put stuff like a dark grey on the teeth, if that's what it looks like in the reference photo, and if when you use like your eyedropper tool, that's the colour that it's kind of saying that it is, then just use that colour. Even if your brain's trying to tell you that it shouldn't be that colour. Now we're moving on to the rest of the skin and the cheeks. And so what I like to do here is I like to first say where are the shadows and obviously the darkest bits are around the side and the contour lines for the cheekbones. And so I get those areas in first. I like to use 
brought umbers, burnt siennas, or brown tones for the shadows. They're really nice tones. So to do this and to get it really smooth, I just use the side of the pencil and I just shade it like I would normally. And the key to getting smooth skin is that you can't press hard at the start. Just use the side of the pencil to shade, even if it looks messy and grainy. When you blend it out, you'll be able to get rid of all of that because you haven't pressed hard on the pencil. If you press too hard on your pencil, then you'll leave stubborn pencil strokes that you'll find very hard to blend out. So once I added all of the sort of shadow, I'll just speak through what I'm gonna do on this side now. I'll add that brown shadow for the right hand side and this side of the face was a lot darker but once I add in that brown tone I'm going over with a slightly lighter tone but it's still quite dark and I'm just shading that where the lighter shadows are on the cheekbones and I'm glazing that over the brown areas as well so that they look consistent with each other and they blend nicely into each other and then I'm adding some of the more generic base skin tones and I'm applying more pressure. And I've identified that the highlight is just below the eye. So I'm just leaving an area where I don't blend it out really heavily with the colored pencil, like the base layer of the flesh tone. I don't burnish the highlighted area out. I leave that so that I can burnish that out with like a white pencil so I can get that highlight look. And so... I basically just didn't do as many layers on the skin tones. I just filled it in with the colour that it needed to be. So either like the Burnt Ochre 10% or the Burnt Sienna 10%, stuff like that. And I then just used a lighter white or buff titanium. So like an ivory colour to blend out the highlights and just those browns or those darker Burnt Siennas for the shadows. But I'm going to be doing a whole video very soon just focusing on drawing the skin so that I can really explain the process for drawing the skin because this is something that people have a lot of trouble with. And I have got other videos on my channel dedicated to drawing skin as well, but I will be doing a more updated one this week. So if you wanna check that out, make sure you subscribe if you're new here. But I'm just going to do that throughout all of the skin. So onto the forehead. And the forehead is something where you don't really have to put much detail into it. You just need to focus on where are the shadows and where are the highlights to get that three dimensional look. And with a forehead, it tends to be very similar that the shadows are at the sides and kind of around the edges of the forehead. And then towards the center, it's more highlighted. So I concentrate the shadows on the edges of the face and then I add a more general skin tone to the rest of the forehead. So blending out those shadows and getting it as a base layer on the rest of the forehead. But I apply a slightly lighter layer to the middle so that I can burnish and blend that out with the lighter color. Because what happens is if you put too much colored pencil on one area, it will start to just like pull up and it won't look smooth anymore. But that's basically it for this tutorial. So if you wanna see the real time version of this, which is like the full 18 hours worth of videos, then that's available on my Patreon, which I'll link in the description. Anyway guys, that's it for this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, why not give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. And if you wanna see even more right now, then I've got a playlist over there that you can check out, but I'll see you guys next time. Bye everybody.